Then there's also uh, how many students have completed a high school diploma or equivalent. We'll touch on that uh, near uh, closer to the end of our presentation today. And then there are three other types of uh, measurable skill gains that can also be reported. Oh, but today we'll be uh, covering that. Now, what are the educational uh, educational functioning levels? Well, today there are several different educational functional level ways to report, but today we're just going to be looking at the pre and post test gains. What's uh, how many students have moved a level from pre test to post test? So, if we could look at the next slide, please. So. The, under the measurable skill gains for English as a second language programs, there are six levels that the federal government is looking to see. Um, starting at the bottom number, uh, level one is beginning ESL literacy, and then it gets um, moves up the scale to uh, NRS level six, which is an advanced ESL level. So the, the data that's being reported is how many students are at a certain level when they enter and then how many have moved a level. So how many students have come into the program at, for example, a level three, and then how many moved to a level four? And that's what's reported to the uh, feds. And on the right hand of this chart, you can see there's some CASAS scale scores. So it's from CASAS testing that you, we are able to identify what is the level that a student is at when they come into the program. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that during this uh, session. So a measurable skill that gains is looking at how many students have made a gain from one level to a higher level over the course of their instruction. So Robert, why are these measurable skill gains important? Yes, it's, it's really great how how we can take such a, a intimidating uh, uh, topic, measurable skill gains, but really once we understand exactly how they're used, yeah, you know, in our day to day uh, for your adult education program, you know, obviously they become a lot less intimidating and they make a lot more sense. And by the way, I should say that um, that you know I can't say it enough. The big picture of this Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act is for whether it's our workforce centers or Department of Labor uh, friends, or we in the adult education world, it really boils down to how are we helping learners get jobs, be prepared to get jobs, have the kind of soft skills to keep those jobs, and then have the kind of rigorous education with us so that they're able to have life after ESL, if you will, to go on to adult basic education or high school equivalency, and then definitely for career training programs, industry certificates, and uh, college degrees, okay? As well as civics, which is a component in there, and making sure that they know the rights and responsibilities of living in a new country and contributing to their uh, community and getting the most out of it. But within those we owe a common measures that I just talked about, once again, there's a subset and that's where we get these measurable skill gains. And the measurable skill gains are kind of that check engine light, but hopefully in a positive way, right? And they're gonna broken up into these areas. First, they really can help if we really take the time to uh, work with learners to help them understand what these data points are. And in the end, these data points should be showing student success, okay? So learners see that making, making progress towards their goal is, is uh, particularly as Jane was talking about, moving students from level to level in, those, in that chart that you saw, moving from educational functioning levels. So this is a, a really big part, okay? Now, also um, the, for particularly their teachers to help them uh, along this this pathway, um, getting data in their hands, getting data in the hands of teachers, getting data in the hands of program administrators to know uh, that we are rowing in the right direction, if you will, and we're doing the right the right things for learners. That's why measurable skill gains are important. And uh, and then finally, program funding. And in fact, typically, when program funding is either uh, boosted 
or it's drawn back, it's because particularly as we're isolating today, this pre and post test, what's happening when a student first takes a test with us and then takes a follow-up test, you know, months later, typically, do they advance on that chart through those functioning levels? And so oftentimes funding is tied to, you know, this type of success. Okay. So now we're going to talk about three strategies, three strategies to improve um, the, those measurable skill gains. And again, we can't say it enough time just for the kind of time we have together. We're going to be talking a lot about making assessment gains. And again, those assessment gains should be showing, you know, the, the long-term, how the learners are making uh, achievement uh, for their, um, you know, for their goals. So the first strategy that we're going to take a look at today is aligning learning to student goals. Okay. Most, most critical. All right. And so that, you know, that while we have standards and we have benchmarks and frameworks in the end, we have to ask ourselves for those students who are saying, I'm here because I need to get a better job. I'm here because I'm struggling on my current job and I want to keep it. Or maybe I was credentialed back in my home country and I really would like to participate in further study here to recredential, okay, or to move up a career ladder. So I think both the CASAS data that you're going to be taking a look at, as well as what you're going to see in Burlington, it fits seamlessly to achieve this. And then we're going to talk about how you can get the best quality how how learners can not necessarily have to study things that they're totally comfortable on right how we don't have to in a way you know bore them with things that they've already nailed down but we can make sure that we know those areas of improvement we know exactly uh, what they are through the assessment uh, given through CASAS and then with that data in teachers' hands, just how quickly you can go into Burlington English and really make sure that that's a focus. And then lastly, increase post-testing rates, okay? Again, I wish I had you in front of me. I'd love to know, particularly from how many administrators, post-testing rates, how many learners came into your program, got a, got a pre-test, but for so many reasons, didn't get a post-test even though they were eligible, okay? post-testing rates. If, if, by the way, if that's, if that is a concern of yours, if you'd put that in the chat, if you've ever taken a look at your data and you've seen the amount of learners who came in with a pretest and then we never got a post-test on them to see if they did make a measurable skill gain and improve, I'd love to see in the chat just how many people experience that same kind of challenge. Okay. So with that, let's talk about a learning uh, uh, excuse me, aligning learner goals. And I'm going to pluck uh, an image right out of our, our Burlington, uh, Burlington English uh, program. And this is, this is from our career exploration and soft skills. I love it. This, this course, it, it, we, if we talk about aligning instruction for, for student goals, well, one of the best folks I have ever worked with um, uh, Scott Schnappoff, hi Scott, was our, our career counselor, and he was able to get that information from our learners, where do they want to go. So during these most challenging times, you should know, if you can't bring your learner to a career counselor, or to a job fair, or to job shadowing, just know, particularly with career exploration soft skills, but also with core and our career extensions, you can virtually bring all of those elements to your learner. So the reason that we chose to show this was you got to know where you're at on a journey, a career pathway. It's a road trip, if you will, career road trip. You got to know where you're at. You got to know where you're going. And then incrementally along the way, you got to know through GPS, are you making the right turns and are you making the right decisions to meet your goals? So the analogy here is that CASAS provides the where are you now, can help to where you're going incrementally can give you the GPS coordinates. And once again, we'll show you in just a few moments just how easy it is to take that data from Burling, from CASAS 
And again, even though Burlington, uh, particularly our brand new core is so robust, we're gonna show you how within seconds to be able to do targeted instruction based on the reports that Jane's about to show you uh, as far as knowing exactly where your students need attention. So improving quality of instruction. And for this part, I'll turn it over to Jane because obviously once again, knowing where their students are and where they're going starts with data. Okay. So if we could go to the next slide, please. Um, the CASA system has been built or as I had said earlier, a 40 year period on how to help programs improve learning for their uh, learners or help students meet their goals. And from the very beginning, we've had these content areas that we've uh, identified competencies within these because for many, many years, we've known that contextualized learning is really um, dynamic and very important for our adult, adult learners in order to help them see the value of coming to class or attending class on Zoom or where, wherever they're uh, doing their learning, it's important that they see the relevance of what they're learning and how it applies to their everyday life. And this has been supported now with a new initiative from the Octave, the Skills That Matter. And these are the very uh, almost identical, the, the topic areas that this uh, contextualized learning uh, has been shown to be successful in. And let me just give you an example um, in one more slide. In these categories, consumer economics, um, they are broken down into more discrete categories. And this is just one example from the area of health, which is content area three. If you d dig a little bit deeper to a competency area, category 3.4, that's a two digit level, then we, we start identifying a little bit more information. What does it mean in the area of health? And this one is understand basic health and safety procedures. We could even go a little deeper and say, well, what does that mean? And these are more uh, measurable objectives that can be uh, that can be assessed and taught. So for example, 3.4.1 is interpret product label directions and safety warnings. Now that could in, that could be taught and, and measured from a very beginning level, a very simple label to a very complex one where the safety labels and warnings are uh, measure, uh, hazardous materials. And this could involve some writing, some speaking, some uh, reading, uh, some math, depending on what kind of label it is. So again, this is a way to organize uh, the instruction and look at all the different aspects of it. We'll be looking at a few reports coming up and you'll see these uh, numbers showing up again and it'll make more sense. So how do you find out where a student is? So we, CASAS has paper and computer-based testing and we advise as many sites as possible to go with e-test just because it generates so many very rich reports that are very, um, takes doesn't take the teacher time to hand score things, but they can be, uh, the test can be scored immediately and the reports generated. So we recommend that new sites start with e-test or sites that have paper tests move to e-test as they are able to. So if we could go to the next, next slide, please. All of the CASAS test items are coded to specific competencies out of those different uh, content areas. They're also coded to specific content standards. And the content standards are the underlying academic skills that are being measured. And this kind of information is very, very important for teachers to understand. The teachers need to understand what are the content standards that they are developing for the students so that they can become uh, stronger uh, and independent learners. So every test item has a specific competency that it's measuring and a specific content standard. So in this case, this is a sample item of a student is being asked to read and interpret this chart, uh, Sammy's calendar. And 
they have to be able to understand it and be able to answer the question, when does Sammy play soccer? So this is just one kind of a task area. This is reading a chart. There are other kinds of task areas, reading uh, uh, paragraphs. And uh, so that when you see a CASAS uh, test report, then that's why you can see, get all this information is because we know what was being measured. So if we could go to the next slide, please. This is an example of a student performance report that's generated out of TOPS, which is a game of programs and students software. And there are a lot of different reports. This is one that's just for a student. This is sample student number one. Um, and it's been, we asked it to generate at the competency area, just at the two digit level. And we always spell out what are the uh, competencies that are being taught. So here on the left column is a competency area. And then in the second column, it's the percentage correct. And we've asked it to sort that the, the most items missed are at the top so that the teacher and the student can really quickly see what are the competency areas that they may want to tackle to begin with and to help prioritize. The next example is an example, the next report that we'll look at is a class report. And again, the class reports can be generated at the competency area. And again, uh, or it could be generated by a content standard. Uh, again, the teachers will be able to discern what, what, would, what kind of report would really help them. And in this case, it's 14 students are in this class. And this has been sorted by the position of the test item. So they're in order of how that item was delivered on the test. So that's at the beginning of the test, you can see the first item had 81%. Well, our, the CASAS tests are created so that the easier items are at the beginning and the harder ones are at the end. So it's a kind of a power test and we're trying to measure their progress. But again, we see the three digit competency number in the third column and then we spell it out in the last column. So you never have to memorize or go to another document to see, well, what was that number? What did we refer to? We try to make it easy for the teacher and for the learners to be able to read and understand their own reports. If we could go to the next one. Next slide, please. So now we've, how do we, figure out this NRS level, which is on the left. Again, I had mentioned earlier that it's the CASA scale score that's on the, that we see listed on the right. We tell the, here we're showing what all the ranges are, but again, using e-tests and TOPS Pro, that's all calculated on, um, behind the scenes for the teachers and the learners. So let's go to the next slide and I'll show you an example of a personal score report. And this is one student who has been tested in reading. And um, this person, Teresa, she got um, NRS level four, which is a scale score of 208. So that's been automatically calculated that 208 is equal to a ESL level four. And then the student can see on the bottom, the thermometer that shows the, the range uh, where they are. And hopefully when they take the next test, they will see that their skills have improved and they've moved up this on this thermometer. And right now she's in a, a um, level four and hopefully the goal is that she'll move into a level five the next time. But we're always looking at, have they made a scale score gain? And that's the important thing. Sometimes they won't make a measurable skill level, but they've made a significant scale score gain, which is as important for the student that they're showing progress. So if we could go to the next slide, please. So this is a class performance by competency category. And um, I'm going to let Robert pick it up from here. This go from this class performance to how does this link, how, does it, how do these competencies link to uh, Burlington English? Oh, Can thank you. you. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Jane. Um, again, 
uh, what I love, and I, I'd love to see in the chat, how many folks are making the move from paper and pencil use of CASAS uh, to uh, Tops Pro Enterprise? That'd be really, really interesting to see because I, I love all of the dynamics that are going on now because if, well, we've been hearing a lot of reports as far as when the economy reopens, it's going to be more and more and more a digital economy. We're going to have, we're going to be seeing, you know, a lot of those those no tech jobs, low tech, no tech jobs going away, being replaced by technology. And we've heard it for the longest time. Technology won't won't replace all learners or nor all teachers, but it's but teachers who use technology, you know, workers who use technology are going to replace those who don't. So just know that every, what I'm so excited about, talk about during these challenging times, taking lemonades and turning it into lemons is just how critical. In fact, you should know that we at Burlington have been working on our uh, Burlington core for quite some time. Um, and that's our brand new Burlington that is going to, um, is going to you know just just blow your mind if you haven't seen it. I would genuinely genuinely hope that you reach out to one of my colleagues to take a look because what we're going to be talking about here is uh, freeing the data. You know, too often times when I ran programs, the data stayed in the registration room, okay, and it never reached the teachers who so needed it. So I love it here. I love it here that um, that I can go. And, and again, take these data reports and do targeted instruction with it. And uh, let me show you just how quickly you, you can do that. So I can, I can see that one of these uh, performance indicators is jumping out at me, okay? And that's only 40%. Now remember, the, okay, real quick, what does the W stand for in WIOA? Let's see how fast in the chat box somebody can type in. What's the W? No, no cheating on any other documents you have. What's the W mean in WIOA? All right, fantastic. Okay, Jane, you're right. I knew I was with the advanced class today. So let's put the workforce back in, in WIOA. And what does that mean? That means that, you know, it's it starts really you know, with understanding, you know, the basics of getting a job. So let's see how we can do that with Burlington. And so I'll, I'll jump now to a quick, um, you know, to a quick uh, connection for taking that data that J James just shared and how fast could I do it? I, I almost want to play beat the clock. Now, before I do get started, if you haven't seen Burlington in a while or relatively new, you got to know that, um, how about this in the chat? How many of you are actually on site? How many of you are primarily on site? That'd be interesting. So this image right here. And then how many of you are primarily online? Okay. How many of you are primarily online? Boy, the chat box just blowing up. Okay. What I love is even if you have to happen in a pivoting situation, to where one night you're on site and then some news comes and now you have to teach from the comfort and safety of your own home. That that screen that just popped up right here, that's our in-class lesson. You're gonna, green means go for teachers here. So our in-class lessons, okay, they are perfect to help you pivot. So everything that you're gonna hear me talk about, you know, right now, doesn't matter, got you covered. Daytime teacher, nighttime teacher, full-time, part-time, on-site, online, hybrid, We've blended, we've got you. Everything that you're gonna see, once I get that data, okay, from CASAS or from some uh, mock tests that we're able to give in Burlington, I'm gonna then be able to seamlessly connect it. And look at the similarities of the screens that you see right there of what the teacher is gonna be doing, that in-class lessons that projected up on the whiteboard or projecting on the Zoom for that teacher. And then to what the student's going to be seeing, whether they're on in a moment, what, yep, you could read my mind, whether your learners are using Chromebooks, whether they're using tablets. And again, right now, what I love is everything I could do as a learner back at the, de back at the building on a full bone desktop and full bone laptop, I can now do on my smart device. So also um, you should know that as you're trying to keep, 
you know, everything structured, right? So we've been hearing about a lot about um, emergency remote teaching, kind of scrambling and gluing together different resources, random websites and PowerPoints. And all it's been causing is stress for our part-time hourly adjunct teachers, as well as our full-time teachers, and then particularly for our learners. So just know if you're looking for consistency of product, something you can just, as Jane said, push a button and you've got it. That's what we've got right here. So let me jump for just a moment, and this is this is always this is always fun. As we move, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the proverbial "Can you see my slide?" Right? That's that's always that's always fun. I'm going to show you um, our um, I'm going to show you our our screen for um, and Jane, you can you can help me out as I'm as I'm sharing sharing my screen. What I, what I want to do here, ah, there we go. I think I've got it. Okay. What I want to do is I want to move to, you're seeing my Burlington Core right now? Yes. So like I say, Burlington Core from the very, you know, lowest starts of, of, um, of CASAS, okay, that very first even pre-A, right? You know, when we're talking literally colors and numbers, students literally just making their emerging in English, we've got you covered with our Burlington basics. And bridge programs, you know, life after ESL, you can start that as early as you'd like because of how robust Burlington English is. But let me show you um, again, uh, if you noticed, if you recall, let me see in the chat, who can remember there was something about employment. We plucked out one particular employment um, element, a content area, a competency. Uh, let's see if anybody's got a really fantastic memory on that. There was something about getting a job and there were some numbers involved. Let's see if anybody can see. Jane showed a, um, Jane showed a, 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 a report. Ah, ah, Leslie. All right. Winner, winner. There you go. So let's take a look at what I'm using as a teacher, projecting up um, to the uh, to the board, or if I'm at home, what I'm projecting to to my learners. Um, so I can either let me go ahead and reset all of this. What I love is 4.1. That's thank you, helping learners identify ways to get jobs. Okay, so we've got you covered here. I can either launch straight in to getting a job because re you remember those those areas that that Jane showed about you know getting a job keeping a job health navigating the community everything as you can see our modules totally mirror that but let's get targeted let's go uh, now so as a teacher I can either launch straight in to uh, any aspect of getting a job also by the way how many of you have at least in your in your somewhere in your past have had to jump to maybe using four or five textbooks or maybe at least five six different websites or something how many in the chat be interesting to see have had to really toggle between okay well we we know that that really just doesn't make sense we want to make it as easy as possible for you so we want to put everything in one place so as you can see here four skills in grammar, listening and speaking, reading reading and writing. We've got you, you know, again, plus grammar, everything we've got you covered. But let's be targeted here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you our fantastic search feature. So again, I've gotten the, the test report from, from the testing room, and now I'm going to see exactly how quickly I can get into Burlington for it. So in my search feature for my Burlington core, I've clicked on correlations. Then look how easy it is, whether it's college and career readiness standards, ELPSs. Okay, I can, I can so quickly find exactly what my students need help in. Now, a number of you put isn't this fantastic? Thank you, Pamela Joe. Yeah, this is a fantastic feature. I can look out, look how quickly I can go straight to employment. And then do you remember it was 4.1? Boom. And now what I can do is I can click apply and I can either highlight or I can make my life really simple with the filter and jump right, right into exactly 
the ones that are, are perfect for me. So we were talking about needing to improve learners, um, you know, helping them with, with getting a job. So uh, how many of you have had a job interview in the last five years and it was stressful? Let me see in the chat. How many of you have had, I'll give you 10 years, five to 10 years. How many have had a stressful? Okay. And you speak English. Could you imagine for our learners having to go through this process, having to go through this process? I mean, it really, really is amazing. So what I love with Burlington English here is it is immersive. Our students, we, again, I can't say it enough. If because of all the shutdowns, you can't bring your learners to, to the, the experience, the on-site experience you want them, how about bring it to them? So how about having them engage in a mock interview? So I could go through all the different you know, tabs that we have here, but I have to tell you, I'm gonna take just a few seconds to show you, and again, thank you to Marcel and Naomi and every Debbie, everybody involved in putting these together. These were fantastic. Talk about immersive so that your learners can go and see a video right here. They have the ability to subtitle it. I can maximize the screen. So I know time is of the essence here, but let me show you just a, a few seconds of what it's like to help our learners um, you know, through more than just a data point, more than just understanding how to get a job. So uh, I'm gonna Cecil B. DeMille for just a second and launch this. And this is helping our learners really get into feeling what it must be like. Hello, I'm Liz Hollis. I'm Mario Silva. Nice to meet you. Please have a seat. So I'm looking for a salesperson. Tell me, Mario, have you ever worked in sales? Yes, I've been a salesperson at Maxi Close since 2017. And tell me, what did you do before that? I used to live in Brazil. I worked there as a salesperson for three years. Can you tell me what you do at Maxi Clothes? I work in the women's department. We sell ladies' shirts, dresses, and pants. Now, we don't have time to go through all of it, but I got to tell you, I think he's got the job. Okay, I love this feature. The fact that I can bring video, right? I can bring video to all, all of my, my elements here. And so I can really help it make, it make it come to life. Okay, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you, I keep talking about how Burlington is blended, okay? So as you're trying to address 4.1, getting a job, look what you can do right now. Let's, let's quickly jump to, we've got this wonderful feature in the top right called the switcher. And so this is going to let me, and so I could even demo for my students what they're about to launch into when they've logged off from me and they're learning from home. So look at how easy it is to seamlessly blend going, going from this experience that we just, that we just showed to what the students are going to see when they've logged off from me and they're working as a teacher and they're working self-directed. Wow, exactly. And when you're thinking about the best way, how about this on a scale of one to five in the chat, one being not so much, five being a lot, how concerned are you for student retention in um, uh, if you have to serve your students primarily remotely? How, well, how yes, ma'am? Uh, there are two big black boxes on the screen that were, uh, so we can't see very clearly. We don't know what's happening. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that, friends. All right, let's let's go ahead. Um, how about right now? Any better? No, sorry. Okay, no worries. No worries. It wouldn't it wouldn't be a tech presentation, right? Without, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you're you're not seeing the um, uh, the Burlington Core. Not very clearly. You know, there's some. Uh, for some reason, it's not very clear, and there's a there's a black box hovering over the some of the text. Okay. Okay. Take me just a second. Thanks for everybody for your indulgence. Let me close. How about right now? Uh, there's still one there for some reason. All righty. Oh, and this is trust me. This is the super ex exciting part. I really. Really genuinely. Uh, how about now? 
it's still there. Sorry, but okay. Keep keep keep. For, we'll we'll indulge you with the black box, so you can explain what uh, what's available. Okay. Okay. Um, well, it shouldn't be a black a black box. And th uh, thank you. We'll try this one more time. Anything different now? Now it's good. Thank you. Are you seeing the uh, the Burlington Core? Yes. Keeping okay. Learning structured and standards based. Ah. Okay. But not the. Um, no, not you're not in the the core. Okay. Yeah. The technology elves are at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let me let me jump back for just a second, folks. Thank you very, very much. And like I say, I can't can't say enough that um, you know. Do do hope you reach out to one of my Burlington colleagues who can uh, give you even more. I, the, one of the reasons that I wanted that I, uh, that I'm like a dog with a bone here, which I have seven, by the way, is <laughs> um, is I want to show. I want to show um, how critical it is. And Jane, just let me know if I'm still okay. not still now, not seeing the Burlington now, Core. Huh? Now you are, and it's clear. It's good. Uh, the the mock okay. job interview. Yes. Okay. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much. All right. So with the limited time we have together, I like to I like to emphasize something that has um, that has always impressed me. Um, as somebody who has taken a lot of time, taken a lot of time trying to um, uh, trying to uh, learn a foreign language. So in the chat, how many folks have taken a, a fair amount of foreign language classes, but then when you got out in the real world, it was just way too fast. Anybody willing to admit that that was okay? Exactly. So this is the part that I love, and I know we're coming towards the conclusion of our, our webinar here, but this is the big part. This is the rubber hits the road for student retention, for student retention, because overwhelmingly the research says that how our typical learner judges himself or herself is through, through this, is actually seeing is how they feel when they're having to speak uh, without text, without text, in a real life context, on the job or in the community. Okay, so now what I've done, just to just to share with you, I've toggled between what the students, uh, what I was doing as a teacher, and now this is what I'm going to be doing as a learner. So let me play this just for a moment. Why are you looking for a new job? There are no full time jobs at the pharmacy where I work. I need a full time job, and I'd like to work here. Great, but sometimes our store is crowded. A lot of customers need help. How do you? Okay, so Jane and everybody, I'd like you to put in the um, in the text box. Were we mostly doing a listening comprehension or mostly doing a reading comprehension exercise? Okay, what what were we doing there? Were we doing mostly a listening comprehension or a reading comprehension? And the research says is that because we had the text. Okay, we were actually overwhelmingly doing a reading comprehension. So one of the features I love with Burlington English is down at the bottom, I can hide the text, okay? So now I've gotten comfortable, I've watched it with the text. Why are you looking for a new job? There are no full-time jobs at the pharmacy where I work. I need a full-time job and I'd like to work here. Great, but sometimes our store is crowded. A lot of customers need help. How do you? Great, but sometimes so our. As you can see, I've now now have as a learner. Now I'm really experiencing a true, real life listening comprehension. And if you think about our students being locked down and not having uh, not having uh, the ability, you know, at their workplaces and to engage in English, providing them with with Burlington English is a fantastic way, not just to make level gains, you know, with the CASAS listening, but in real life. Well, Jane, I know I've taken a ton of extra time here on this part. Let me turn it back over to you to help, to help pull us together here. Yeah, we'll rush to the finish line. Yep. 
let's see. Um, there's a poll that just appeared. So go ahead and uh, answer that and then close it out. And our last strategy was how to increase post-testing times. So Robert will find that slide in just a minute. So this is a, strat a strategy that is an easy to, easy, not easier said than done, but we have technology to help us uh, increase the post-testing rates. And if your uh, agency is using TOPS, there is a report that's available. Uh, Robert, we're not seeing the slide. Sure. Uh, gotcha. Yet. I'll do, do that right now. Okay. So with the CASA system, we have, uh, and with other tests, you have your pre and post testing. And then in TOPS Pro, there's a uh, data, in, data integrity report. And that data integrity report, I see it's coming. Let's see, Robert. The data integrity, data Are you integrity, able to see, the, see it right now? Uh, now we can, yes, thank you. Okay. okay, so this NRS data integrity report shows the administrator, all the data that's uh, available in your uh, system. And if you look at row number nine, I've enlarged it, it says no post test. So in this particular site, there's 91 students or 39% of this site's population that has no post test. You can actually click on that 91 and it'll uh, let you dive in and see exactly which students are missing their post tests. And so this kind of information really helps target, well, are, they, are, are those people that are due for a post test because they've been in the program long enough or with managed enrollment or open entry, open exit, it's difficult to keep tabs on everybody. So by relying on this data integrity report, you can really clean up your data and make sure it's it's the best possible to show your successes. Um, let's see. Uh, can you go to the next? I think th this is one of mine. Okay. Okay, we must be on a <laughs> different. Yeah. Okay, it's it's twelve o'clock. Uh, twelve o'clock in California and three o'clock everywhere else. And we thank you so much for uh, spending this time with us. Again, the three um, strategies to increase your measurable skill gains is to align learning to student goals, improve the quality of instruction, and increase post-testing rates. And following that, plus other great strategies, we know that you'll be able to show success. So thank you, everybody. Yes, and I know uh, many of you have a hard stop, but I would really, really, really implore you. There is so much great information that we can help. And particularly this slide right here, and, and once again, if you have to leave us, totally understand, but this slide right here, this how many learners are sitting in programs uh, that haven't are eligible and that haven't been post-tested. If this is a major, major, major problem throughout the country. And so just know if you move to the, um, if you move to, the Tops Pro Enterprise, you get reports that show you that you've got learners that very easily could be boosting your measurable skill gains, but we just haven't gotten a post test on them. And then lastly, if you happen to use Burlington English or are considering using Burlington English, please reach out to my colleagues because we, again, we have an element called prepare for CASAS that is spot on for, um, keeping in, you know, keeping programs mindful that learners are becoming eligible and again, reducing stress, uh, you know, test anxiety. So using that prepare for CASAS uh, gives you really, really, really great phenomenal, um, phenomenal reports as well that complement everything the TOPS Pro would do. So with that, again, thank you very much. Really sorry about the hiccups toward the end. Sure hope this was helpful to you. And uh, again, Jane, any final words here? No, thank you for this opportunity and we look forward to meeting everybody again soon. 
Yes, and please uh, blow up our our, our uh, email boxes. Uh, J uh, I've been sending Red Bull to Jane and she to me. So we would love to help out. So that's uh, jguez at casas.org. And then the general, uh, you know, uh, email casas at casas.org. And for myself, please, robert.b at burlingtonenglish.com. And then as well as our info at burlingtonenglish.com as well. Thank you, everybody.